If you are thinking of building a CI/CD pipeline using AWS only services, you probably want to know how to secure them. In this video, we'll talk about the common CI/CD services that are available from AWS and also what are security best practices. Now, if you already know what the common services are, feel free to use the timeline below to go straight to the CI/CD services best practice, both from the Amazon side as well as from the services side. Otherwise, if you are someone who probably has not heard of these services before, or you just want to understand the business case for why are these really important, then let's walk through the rest of the video to talk about some of the services, the definition for what you need to understand before you even go down the path of building a CI CD service, and why do businesses care about it. So the first one, let's start with definition. The first definition we need to understand is what is a CI CD pipeline. CI stands for continuous integration, CD stands for continuous deployment or continuous delivery. Depending on who you talk to in DevOps space, they might give you a different definition. But at the end of the day, what it really means is if you have an application, let's just say Facebook.com, and you want to deploy any new changes or new features to it, you can do it two ways. You can either do it manually, that you can have yourself just type in each code and step by step take it from your laptop to an environment where you can test it. And then from there to another environment where you can finally say, oh, okay, now Ashish or anyone else who's watching this video would get the new version of Facebook.com. Or you could do the smarter way, which is basically having someone build a CI CD pipeline, which continuously integrates with any other Facebook.com requirements or any other application requirements. At the same time, the moment the test would pass, it moves it to the next environment. So it goes from your laptop to the server and from the server to any audience or viewers or users of facebook.com without anyone interrupting it. You can also have approval processes, but the bottom line is you're automating the whole process. So which means in your digital transformation journey, if you're going from just, you know, doing hand typing, manually doing everything, you can start deploying code into production from 20 to 30 times and even more. Another definition that people want to know is what is the source code repository? Source code repository examples are many. However, the general definition is all the code that is required to build the application at any given point in time, no matter at what stage it is, even if it's in production, that is everyone can see it versus me as a developer trying to develop it today. That's what the source code repository is. And the reason it's important to understand this is because it's a source code repository that is used by the CI CD pipeline, which is why I spoke about the CI CD pipeline before to interact and deploy applications into any environment that you want to. From an AWS perspective, these are some of the common services that you would use to deploy a CI CD pipeline. Things like code commit, code deploy, code build, and code pipeline. Now I can go into definition of each one of these. However, out of these four and a lot more AWS services from a CI CD pipeline perspective, the two services that I would definitely call out is code build and code pipeline. Code build is a set of scripts or set of actions that would automatically happen. Code build are a set of services or actions that would take place by deploying an application or updating an application when triggered by something like a code pipeline or any other external API that it accepts as a way to be triggered for making changes into an application. Now, Core Pipeline on the other end is our CI CD pipeline equivalent. It is basically the stage orchestrator, if you want to use that word. It orchestrates the entire flow that I spoke about earlier that as to what a CI CD pipeline does. The code pipeline is the service that would deploy. Oh, okay, so I need to move it from my laptop to the server. Oh, I need to move it from my server to production. You can do the entire orchestration by using something called the AWS code pipeline. Now, from a code repository perspective, there are a lot of examples that you can use to trigger and connect to your code pipeline or to code build. However, there are some non AWS services that you should be aware of that are very commonly used. For example, there is GitLab, which is the Fox logo. Then there is GitHub, and then there is Bitbucket from Atlassian. GitHub by itself is a good company. And if you have been following the cloud security vulnerabilities.com for all the series so far, the vulnerabilities that we have been talking about, or even the cloud security vulnerabilities we speak about are all on cloud security vulnerabilities.com. The GitHub repository link is there, and you can definitely try and connect to those because most people have been using these before AWS came up with their own code repository services. They have code deploy, code star, code good. They have a lot more services, but for the context of CI CD pipeline, I think it's important for you to know that you don't really just need to work with the AWS services. You can definitely use the, you know, the more popular code services that are out there. Now, why would someone care about CI CD pipeline? I gave an example earlier about the fact that CI CD pipeline is important when you're trying to do multiple deployments into production pipeline. So the first business case would be using AWS, build a CI CD pipeline so you can deploy applications into production. 
Now, because this is also a security channel, we're also gonna talk about how you can uplift the CI CD security of the pipeline itself. I was gonna do a walkthrough of a really simple GitHub to code pipeline and code build. The architecture of what I was gonna deploy was gonna be really simple. My code was gonna be in GitHub and code pipeline is listening for any changes that are made or commit into the GitHub. See what I did there? Once the code pipeline picks up the change, it uses the code build to store the changes that I've made. Essentially, in my case, it was a package that is stored into S3 bucket. And the moment there's an S3 bucket change, the code pipeline picks it up and does another code build action and then deploys it into AWS. But then I realized as I was going through this, Andrew Brown has already done a great job and a lot of others have already done a lot of great walkthroughs. So I would refer to those videos over here that you can check out from a perspective of how do you deploy a CI/CD pipeline using AWS? So I'm not gonna go through another, another walkthrough, but I'll definitely recommend them. However, if you want me to make one specifically with security in mind, happy to do that over here because there are a few more layers to security. Like for example, when you're trying to do code pipeline deployment, you wanna be able to check for any secrets, any linting that you wanna do for any cloud permission deployments, which is by the way, the topic of the next week. You could also be looking for things like, hey, are there any open source vulnerabilities that I should be aware of in my code? Or should I be doing a static analysis so I can identify any obvious security bug in my code? Or there could be a DAS, which is a dynamic analysis of the code when it's running. Is there something that I can do to basically take over the entire application? There's a lot more. And if, if you want me to cover that, definitely leave that as a comment. This was obviously part of the bigger cloud security bootcamp, hence the reason for not including it. Otherwise, this would be a really long video. But if you would like me to make one available for free, definitely leave that in the comment and I'll make sure it is available as a video on Cloud Security Podcast as well. So once you would have done the walkthrough, one thing to realize that OWASP, which is the Open Web Application Security Project, which is well known for a lot of open source projects, they also are known for the top 10 web application security risk, but they're also known for other things, which is including CICD. Now, in your own way, you can definitely look at this as a good starting point to see what you should not deploy and what you should be doing to secure your CICD pipeline. But I'll let you get on to it. It's time to go on to the security best practices both from the Amazon side as well as the application side when you're trying to build CICD security. From an AWS side, you definitely need to be aware of the compliance standards you need to adhere for. For example, is the service available in the region where you can operate? Like if you need to operate in the Saudi Arabia region and the services don't exist in there, clearly you should not be working on those services, right? So if you're watching this and you want to start using the AWS services, but you realize it's not in your region of AWS, then I would definitely urge you to check whether you're allowed to use those services in your region or if there are any other compliance standards that you need to be adhering to, which may or may not be available to the services that you use from AWS, which may be a reason why you may choose to go down the path of GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket or any other code repository out there. You can also use something called AWS Organization SAP or Control Policies to define who can make changes to a code pipeline or anything which is a CI CD service in AWS, especially if it's a production AWS account. You don't want anyone to be able to make changes into production accounts. And especially, you don't want them to be able to change the CI CD pipeline. Over the past few years, examples like SolarWind and a lot more other supply chain vulnerabilities have identified the gap where if you have anything which is supply chain related, you probably want to make sure that you cannot make any changes on it if it's not authorized by someone. You should also look at the CloudTrail services for what are some of the services you should be monitoring from a malicious action perspective. For example, if an IAM user in AWS decides to give itself a code pipeline role, especially a code pipeline role that is for a production pipeline, you probably want to get checked out as well. Having a limited set of users who can access and make changes to the pipeline or even having roles only rather than having an entire IAM user that works on it, Fortunately, most of these services require an IAM role. So as long as you follow the least privileged rules on those IAM services, I think you should be good and not maybe share it with other services that do not need to have those roles in the begin with. You can also use guard duty for identifying any malicious behavior, which may be around the services you may have deployed using the CI CD services that exist from AWS. You can also use AWS config, but that's at the moment limited. At the time of this recording, it's only limited to code build from a conformance package perspective, but I'm sure you can make your own services and API calls to make sure that you're monitoring the remaining CI/CD services for security. Talking about the application side, the application that you would deploy into a CI/CD pipeline, one thing you need to understand is from a simple perspective that IAM is still the biggest use case. You need to be worrying about in CI/CD pipeline. You need to make sure that your IAM privileges are designed in a way they are least privileged 
So not many people can make changes to production. Not many people can approve changes going into production, especially if there's a manual approval involved. Few of the other things you might want to look at is the security of the pipeline for things like, hey, do are there secrets being shared or are you using a secret manager? Are there pipeline registries being compromised or being tampered with? Security of the CICD pipeline. Essentially, are you using a secret manager? If you're not using an AWS CICD service, then are you making sure that you're controlling the access for the CICD service you're using? Are there any entry points you should be aware of or any vulnerabilities of the CICD service you should be aware of? and anything else that you have customized specifically for the CI/CD pipeline. Now, outside of the security of the CI/CD pipeline, you probably also want to know the security of the CI/CD pipeline, that is especially the code that is being deployed, for which I mentioned earlier things like SCA, SAS, DAS. If you don't know what these are, and especially DevSecOps as well, definitely leave a comment below to let me know that I should make a video on it so I can help you understand what those concepts are because they're really important when you're thinking about deploying a CI/CD pipeline. This is where your integration with the DevOps person or a cloud engineer comes in really handy. Last but not least is the security of the endpoints of the pipeline itself. If, for example, if your Kubernetes API is available on the internet, then it doesn't really matter if it's CI/CD pipeline or not. That's where the Tesla hack happened. And if your API is on the internet, then we don't really need to do any CI/CD changes, do we? We can just go straight to the API and make the changes. So things like that are something to be mindful of. Are there any public endpoints that are vulnerable, or are there any public endpoints from that CI/CD service which you're not currently monitoring but may require additional scrutiny from a security perspective? So no one else apart from the authorized people can make changes to it as well. Outside of that, make sure that the source repository that you're using for your code is a trusted one, and no one can make a change to it. It's automatic, so only if there's a commit in production, or only if it's a commit in a certain branch of the repository that you're working on, and only that particular action can trigger a core pipeline or CI/CD pipeline. It's not a sheet just logging in manually and triggering a CI/CD pipeline. If it can happen, it is a bad thing in production. In production, there should not be any SSH access. There should not be any manual changes. That's where production remains very clean. And finally, you also want to deploy services and processes so that it can ensure that the authenticity of this entire CI/CD pipeline process is kept intact. Because the last thing you want is anyone to be able to make changes to your CI/CD pipeline. Like for example, you may want to have SSL or TLS as the endpoint, but someone may just go and change it to non-SSL. You probably don't want that either, right? Now you're ready to make a CI/CD pipeline securely in AWS. As I mentioned before, if you are someone who's looking to build a CI/CD pipeline with SCA, SAS, DAS, or maybe you don't even know what these things are, or DevSecOps is, leave a comment. I'll answer the question in the comment, or I'll make a video for it as well. So to help you understand what these services are and how you can use them as well, if you want me to make a whole uh, tutorial on the whole DevOps and DevSecOps pipeline, happy to make that as well. Just leave a comment so I know. Like for example, if you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, it would let me know that you like these videos. You want me to make more video videos like these more explaining what the AWS services are, what the security best practices are. The reason for this is because we talk about cloud and cloud security all day, every day on this channel. And if you enjoy what we're watching over here, definitely consider subscribing. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Peace.